All right, what's up guys? Justin here with thesketchupessentials.com, your source for SketchUp news on the internet. So uh, let's go ahead and just dive into this thing. So I know everybody's kind of thinking about it, so let's go ahead and talk about it. It's a big deal this week. Um, the election was this week. I'm kidding, not a politics show. Don't, don't click off the video. Um, this week we're going to talk about SketchUp 2017 coming out. So it's very exciting. SketchUp 2017 is out. So uh, I just want to talk about a few of the changes that happened in uh, this new version. So it wasn't a groundbreaking new version or anything like that. Um, it's just basically, um, I think, a whole bunch of things that that we've kind of been waiting on for a while, and I think everybody's kind of excited about it. But uh, let's kind of go through that just a little bit. I'm not going to get into every little change. I will link to the SketchUp video where they talk about all the changes that they made. But in this case, um, I'm just going to go through some of the stuff that I'm kind of excited about, and uh, we'll go from there. So. Um, Let's see, so big changes this time around. A lot of them are kind of under the hood changes. So things like dealing with the way the graphics work and stuff like that, which I think is something that SketchUp really kind of needs. Um, you know, it's got a, you know, it's, it's, it's had some issues in the past with kind of their graphics pipeline and all of that. I'm not really sure if anything that they changed has to do with the number of cores that your computer's using or anything like that, or if it's just kind of some general improvements or anything. But uh, it's supposed to be a bit faster, but basically what they said is it's supposed to e get even faster in the upcoming versions. So I have a feeling a lot of this is kind of tailored to uh, dealing with the whole HoloLens thing and the Microsoft partnership and making sure that uh, SketchUp's models actually work with that, um, especially because when you're dealing with something like that, I think frame rate's really important. So I think you're going to see more optimization as it moves forward. But um, so that's that's uh, probably number one is there's going to be some you're going to see an increase in performance now. You're going to see more increase in performance later. So um, next thing, um, probably the biggest thing, at least for me, is they've kind of upgraded the offset tool. So uh, in the past, um, if you've worked with the offset tool at all and kind of offset some stuff, um, a lot of the time what would happen is you'd get a whole lot of overlapping lines and stuff like that. Um, so you know, you'd, you'd offset something, and then you'd have a whole bunch of lines that you had to clean up after the fact. And they've kind of gotten rid of that. They fixed it so you don't get the line overlap anymore, which is really exciting. It's a lot less. Um, there's a lot less. Uh a lot less cleanup after the fact that you're going to have to do, which I think is a good thing. So um, I'm, I'm, I'm excited about that. Um, another thing they've added is some perpendicular inferencing. So uh, not only do you get inferencing of uh, like parallel type stuff, but also per uh, perpendicular to faces, which is great if you've ever sat there and dealt with kind of an off shape in SketchUp and tried to figure out how to make it perpendicular and you're just sitting there messing with it and it won't do what you want it to do. It seems like they've really kind of uh, worked on that and tried to make that process a little bit better, which I think is a good thing. So um, let's see, what else do we got? Uh, blocking rectangles to non-axis faces. So basically what they've got now is not only can you lock your rectangles to uh, faces on the red, green, or blue axis, but also if you've got stuff on that off axis, um, you can hold that shift key and lock to that, which is going to be a, which is something that I think is long overdue, and I think it's going to make things a lot easier on everybody. Um, a lot of the time you will have kind of an angled face or something like that and uh, you know you, you you want to just draw a rectangle across that and it hasn't been able to do that but now they've added that functionality which I think is going to be a good thing um, let's see they've also worked a little bit with the transparency of surfaces so when using x-ray mode or something like that they've worked on that which I think is a great thing as well um, so you know, they also added the option to change axis colors. I'm not going to be doing this because I kind of like the whole red, green, blue axis system. I've kind of learned those colors. But if you want to change those, I think some of these changes have been kind of focused on people that are colorblind, which I think is good. And I think it's nice to be able to change those things, but not a huge upgrade or update in my mind. Um, they've changed a few things in a layout, specifically the ability to add tables, which I think is really good if you work with uh, like making construction documents or stuff like that. 
Um, they've also changed the extension manager so that you can go in, load, unload, um, upgrade, extension, stuff like that, which I think is another thing that's uh, long overdue. I think the way that you've had to manage extensions in the past has been a little, uh, little clunky and a little more difficult than it needed to be, so they have gone through and updated that. I think that's going to be a good thing. So overall, you know, I'm, I'm excited about the changes they made. I think the changes they made are good, but at the same time, I think uh, nothing groundbreaking. I think it's just stuff that's going to make your life a little bit easier. But I also think that uh, those things that make your life a little bit easier can uh, be huge when you finally get in that situation where you need um, that rectangle tool to uh, go perpendicular to a face, or you need the inferences to do what you need them to do. So I think it's going to be good. I think I'm, I'm excited about it. Um, you can go download this from SketchUp right now. Go check it out yourself. I'll leave a comment below. Let me know what you think about it. Are you excited about the new version? You know, do you think that it didn't have enough changes? Does it need more changes? Um, let me know what you think. So the other thing I'm going to talk about this week is as a part of the whole uh, Microsoft partnership thing that I talked about a few weeks ago, um, SketchUp has released their viewer for the HoloLens. So if you don't know anything about the HoloLens, it's Microsoft's augmented reality viewer. It's not a VR thing, so what that means is basically you can see through it and you can actually see what's out there, but then it kind of overlays stuff on that. Um, and a lot of people think, especially for like enterprise and stuff like that, that's really where this is going to go instead of virtual reality. I'm not really 100% sure yet. Um, I think there's a place for both of them, and I think they're going to be great. Um, but SketchUp has released their viewer for that, so now you can um, actually view SketchUp models in augmented reality, which I think is going to be really cool. Um, you know, the nice thing about the uh, HoloLens is it's got. Um, in addition to overlaying stuff, they've also built in some of the sensors that they built for like the Kinect and stuff like that. So what that means is it can actually like track your hands and you can actually use your hands. You can do like pinch to zoom and rotate and stuff like that. So you can actually use your hands to move stuff around and it actually tracks your hands and it adjusts the model. And you can have multiple people in there viewing the same model at once, which I think is going to be uh, really cool. So I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic about this. I I think the problem right now is the whole system is very expensive. It's very difficult to get into. So I think uh, I think for right now this is kind of entry level new stuff that um, for a lot of people is going to be. Um, it's going to be more something that's developed by companies, I think, than individuals, just because the barrier to entry is still a little high. But as they develop this, this, the technology gets a little less expensive. I think everybody's going to get into it. I think it's going to be huge for architecture and stuff like that. I am super excited to see where this goes with architecture and construction and stuff like that. I mean, the ability for everyone to sit around a 3D model instead of a set of flat plans and actually discuss it and move it around and stuff like that is going to be really cool. Um, and then the ability to actually go out on site and actually see models and stuff like that on site before you build them, I think it's going to be great. I think it's really exciting, and um, I'm just really excited to see where this goes. So. Um, I will link to a little bit more information about this. If you have a hall, if the three of you out there that have a HoloLens right now want to download the viewer and check it out, you can do that through this link. But very excited about this. Very excited about the move into. Um, into augmented reality and virtual reality. So I think this is going to be a good thing. Um, I think that's where I'm going to end the video for this week. Uh, if you like this video, uh, don't forget to give it a thumbs up down below. Also, leave a comment. Let me know what you think about this stuff. Um, I want these videos to be kind of a conversation about SketchUp. So let me know what you're excited about, what you're not excited about. You know, I mean, are you not thrilled with the new version of SketchUp at all? Leave a comment. Let me know. Um, and I uh, really appreciate you guys taking the time to watch this video. And uh, hopefully you enjoyed it. And uh, we'll catch you next week. So thank you very much for watching. I appreciate it.